Hello Scorpios, this is your reading for August of 2022. My name is Vicki Verley and I am the Rock and Roll Prophetess. You can find me at VickiVerley.com. Do not be fooled by imposters. Uh, today, there's a lot happening in this uh, this month coming up this August and it kicks off right at the beginning of the month where the Uranus North Node is exact. Uh, this affects everybody but I wanted to take a little time to talk about it first be for each sign before we do our normal card readings. That's still coming up but let's talk about this uh, first. So this Uranus in, is, is conjuncting the North Node in the sign of Taurus. This is this energy of propelling us into the future. This is this energy of us breaking out of old paradigm and going into the new paradigm, the, you know, moving us forward. And a great example, uh, because this thing is, yeah, it's, it's exact right at the beginning of August, but it's present all the way through mid-July, all the way into mid-August, at least, the energy, the, the peak uh, energetic uh, impact of this. So, a great example is that James Webb Telescope. If you have not checked it out yet, please do check it out. Uh, it's, I've, many of you have probably heard of the Hubble Telescope, which has been around for years. Uh, the Hubble Telescope is those, takes those awesome pictures of the deep space and all the colorful nebulas and everything. And this James uh, Webb that they've just re unveiled during this time of this Uranus, this is, the, like, this is a, a prime example of some positive energy that can come forth from this, um, you know, this Uranian energy and the node is this telescope because who knows where this is going to lead? This, you know, it's going to give us some cool pictures with a lot more details, but who knows what these uh, details will uncover? I mean, it's just, it's so exciting. I'm excited about it, but I've been a Hubble telescope freak since day one, so I mean, it might not be exciting to you, but I'm excited about it. But I just wanted to bring that up because it's just an example of how the positive energy, every sign and every expression of astrological energy, planetary or otherwise, always has a positive expression and a negative expression. So that is one of the ways that it can be positive. So, you know, we don't want to get too hung up in all this, oh, you're on, it could be an earthquake, it could be this, and it, it could be, you know, it could be stuff like that, but it could be this awesome new space telescope, which, you know, so let's look at it, you know, that way. Um, the other part of it is that there's a Saturn in Aquarius, ruler of Uranus, and it's a little bit of astrology, but these, it's, it's also making a square to that. Now, Saturn and the North Node are both very much entwined with fate, karma, destiny. Uh, the Saturn energy might push you towards it can make things difficult or restrict you to make you want to break out and then the uranian energy is all about breaking out and being free and trying different things and big changes you know in our lives so um you know there's that going on uh both of those the push me pull you kind of uh you know sort of interaction i'm gonna make a spray real quick sorry Hot flashes, you know how it goes, girls. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so let's look at it from the perspective of which would actually be Scorpio rising. And then for this particular part of this bonus part of the reading, I, I recommend that you absolutely watch your rising sign. So if you haven't, you know, watched the rising sign, then definitely do that for this part. It'll be more accurate. <clears throat> so it's the Iranian North Node is capping in your seventh house. So that's relationships. I know a lot of Scorpio rising people when Uranus first went in the seventh house, like, oh my God, am I going to get a divorce? Or is this going to happen? Or is this going to happen? Yeah, relationships will go through changes. You could have surprising relationship situations pop up that are beautiful and wonderful. Or even your own relationship could take a turn for the better. Maybe it maybe it falling into you know a routine that was not exciting or so maybe the two of you will go off an adventure together. It doesn't necessarily mean a severing. It, it means taking it to it means change and it means taking it to another level. Now coming out of the Saturn the fourth, some of you may be moving. You know, Saturn the fourth is this moving time. Um, it's where you, uh, very often it's your home environment. Very often. Uh, but it also is like where you were, how you were raised. You know, maybe you don't have to continue on. This is a very powerful uh, configuration 
for breaking uh, hereditary uh, karmic patterns when Saturn goes through your fourth house. You can examine it from the point of view, not from the wounded and your child, but from the point of view of the more mature, uh, you know, soul, the Saturn, the, the parent, the adult. And you can have realization that, hey, I'm bringing this crap into my relationships. I'm modeling these early imprints in my relationships at this time. And you can have a break free or break out uh, of that, that paradigm. And you could have a realization, it's just like, you know, I, I don't want to have the same relationship my parents had, or my grandparents, or, or whatever, or whatever was imprinted or I, I observed as a child. I'm free to create, we can have the, the kind of relationship any, that we want to have, you know, and we can really change things. We're, we're not bound, we're not bound by the past, we're moving into the future more and more. This relationship does not have to be necessarily your lover, or that kind of a relationship partnership. It could be, uh, you know, somebody who uh, you'll be collaborating with or working with, uh, on, you know, in some kind of a work situation. It could be uh, somebody who you just, you know, a new best friend. You know, it, it, it's somebody, these are partners that you deal with on a one-to-one -one, uh, level normally, though. So surprising, you know, surprising twists and turns uh, could be happening for our Scorpios in that area, but also with a tie-in again to this, oops, to this, um, you know, uh, vibration of the fourth house and our ancestry and where we're coming from and where we live and our foundation in life, you know. Okay, the decks we're going to use for this reading now. We are going to use the Rock and Roll Tarot deck, third edition, the small deck, the newest one, which I love. Uh, this is my own design. You can find the information below or on my site if you want to get in on it. Then we're going to do the Morgan Greer for the second part of the reading. Uh, and then finally we're going to pull an animal totem. Sorry if that was loud. If that clicking was too loud for you when I select the cards. And then if you're a level 2 Patreon supporter, we're going to do even another cards from the uh, Rider Way. I'm just going to get a sip of water. And we are ready to roll. Ready to rock. I did it again. I'm sorry if that's too loud. Uh, I'm going to shuffle up, and we're going to do a Celtic cross for the first part of the reading. If you see words, phrases, colors, anything in these cards that stands out to you, know that that is the universe's way of pointing things out to you where you could get some information that's personal information uh, of, to you and not necessarily only for the general people out there. Okay, this is for Scorpio Sun Sign Rising, Moon, or anybody who has prominent Scorpio in their chart. Four of Pentacles, King of Pentacles, Eight of Pentacles, Fool, Six of Cups, Eight of Rods, Eight of Cups, Queen of Swords, Ace of Pentacles, Seven of Pentacles. Well, I mean, we got some Pentacles here, or what? So some of you, this could absolutely be, you know, some kind of big work opportunity. You have the Seven, Ace, uh, four and eight of pentacles. So for a lot of you, this is having to do with some, you know, money situations. Now we do have two court cards showing up here. And I want to point out that even though this one represents as a male and this one represents as a female, they are not necessarily that gender. They could be anybody because these are general readings. And I just do gender fluidity all through my readings now. I don't, I don't really stick to that anymore. Um, so the first one is this King of Pentacles who is blocking you. So this is somebody who, the Four of Pentacles is a card of I feel like I have to hold on to my money. I feel like I don't have as much financial freedom as that I want. And that may be in part of this person who is on top of you blocking you or something. I feel for many of you, news is coming that could break you out of that restriction. And the, the Eight of Pentacles, I mean the Eight of Rods I should say, points right over here at this Ace of Pentacles. So some sort of new beginning and money coming through, uh, an offer of money, a new job, a new opportunity, does seem to be tied into the Queen of Swords here. Queen of Swords is air sign energy, which would include Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. Now we are going to be having, uh, I need to put my crystal somewhere else here, there we go. We are going to be having a full moon in Aquarius on August 11th, which is my mom's birthday. Uh, she's long passed away, but uh, that's always I remember her. You know that that was, and she she loved that number too. She always played that number on the lottery. <laughs> 
and we've got the eight here and the one so that August 11th we are going to be having a new moon we've got an eight here as well so we've got a couple eights and then the one and these look like ones too I said that for another sign too but August 11th there's going to be a uh, a, uh, I should say a full moon in Aquarius and that's also going to reignite and trigger this whole thing this uh, whole Saturn square and the whole deal over here this whole the whole thing I talked about in the beginning the whole astrology stuff okay so um, you know but for you this looks like it could be something really cool and really good because around this this could also actually represent a person who was involved this is maybe the person this could be that seventh house work partnership person that was showing up for some of you there is absolutely ties to the past or possibly connections to children in some way so it could come through your children or grandchildren school you know you know maybe you're at some kind of parent where some of the other parents or you're doing something in school or uh, maybe it's something from uh, having to do with like I write children's music you know like for instance there I write I have a children's book too so it could be like that maybe it's in that industry you know geared towards children in other words um, but for some of you it's something from the past that you're repicking up again and it, it's definitely something that you love that's really cool you got that eight of pentacles here this is doing that work that you love doing what you love and and the money will follow you know he's not even thinking about all those money that's flying out boom 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 it's just flying out of there he's just so focused on what he's doing and he's really enjoying it and really loving it he's he's becoming the craftsman he's he's diving in he's immersed in his craft you know you're leaving the past behind. Maybe you don't know what's out there, but you're ready to leave the past behind. Again, that moon stands out to me, and this almost looks like a moon. I want to say that August 11th is going to be real important for many Scorpio and Scorpio rising people out there. Uh, the very top, the final outcome we do have, of the initial reading, we do have the Seven of Pentacles. So this is, you know, well, look at it for yourself. I always like people to look at it for yourself. What does this face seem like? Does this face seem like... Oh, that was a good day's work, or does his face seem like he's stressed out about money? To me, venture stands. Was there a venture in here? Let's see, there wasn't. It's even it's this seven. I saw venture here, and I and I saw venture, and I heard venture capital. So somebody's going to be dealing with some venture capital in some way, or this is like a venture. I'm hearing private venture. So that's out there for somebody. That's a message for somebody out there. Um, or maybe it's just venture, do it, you know, venture out there, give it a shot. Um, it can, and let that happen too, like it doesn't say venture, but I saw venture, you know, let that happen with these cards. All right, let's scoot over and we're going to move over into the next portion. You are water sign energy, so in this next part of the reading, you're going to show up as either, I'm going to move this crystal because it just seems to be in the way, it's going to be off camera, it's still here, but it's off camera. Um, you're going to show up as either the knight, queen, or king of cups. And when that card shows up, that's going to represent you, whichever one comes out first. And then the card surrounding that particular uh, significator, that is going to be the cards that represent you in the reading. Okay. Scorpio sun, rising, and moon. I do want to mention real quick that I am opening up for the uh, Equinox readings. That'll be available for a month or so. Look at that, right in the row. Wow. Very first card out. Seven of Pentacles, Seven of Pentacles. So venture capital, you might be sitting on a pile of money here and wondering which, you know, which way to go with it next. Like I made this money, now where do I go? Where do I invest it? Maybe you're going to get involved in a partnership with some sort of investing stuff going on here. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Queen of Pentacles. Oh, it was the Queen of, Cup, of Swords for you. I thought it was Queen of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles. Did that show up already? But I'm not sure. But I mean, you got practically every Pentacle in the deck now. Two of Pentacles. I think you got them all. What do you got? You got the one, the two. You don't have the three. You got the four. You don't have the five. You got the six, the seven, the eight. I mean, you got nearly every Pentacle card right now. Fire sign energy. Ten of Cups. Eight. Pentacle again. Ten of Pentacles. There's another one. There's a ten. There you are. King of Cups. Okay, so I'm going to finish out this row like that, and then I'm going to come down and do one underneath you. Also to give us a little bit of f further insight. There's that Four of Pentacles again. I mean, you, 
this is telling me, because you had the Four of Pentacles in the first part too, not to be so hold on to, you know, stay in a situation that you're unhappy with or that, you know, you feel fear, I, I have to stay here. Now, I'm not suggesting that you just walk out the door and quit your job tomorrow with nowhere to go. Uh, although some of you might do this, some of you might, some of you might, you know, take this job and shove it, but I'm not advocating that and I'm definitely not advising that. I always want to look before you leap and see, you know, have somewhere to go in the meantime, but there could be some fear, you know, uh, of like, oh, I hate this job, it sucks so bad, but, you know, I, I have to pay, I have to, you know, you feel like you're in bondage, like you have no options. This is what I want to tell you, that you do have options. You have, they're saying options galore. I'm going to put that on your headline. Options galore. Because you do have options galore. It certainly looks like it. I mean, look at all the pentacles that are showing up. And I don't feel like they're all necessarily uh, the same thing. I'm sorry, that was out of frame. I didn't look up and see it. You know, I, don't, I don't feel like they're all necessarily the same thing. I do feel like you have many options at this time. Options galore. Um, some may not pay as well, but you enjoy them a lot more. Some pay a lot, but maybe you're going to have to put up with some people with some really stern qualities, and it might be st stressful for you. Um, so think about all these kinds of things in there, because with the Iranian energy, we're all wanting this freedom now, right? So we don't want to be necessarily bogged down in something heavy. Maybe some people are like, hey, I'll do it for a few years and, you know, make some money and get out, you know, whatever. It's going to be a different on every individual uh, basis. Here you are, though. This is the card that represents you, and you are just, I mean, these are all, let me put this here and do it like this. These are all, these are the cards. It's just spiritual growth out the wazoo here, out the, you know what. This is you are going to be so in sync and be getting so many psychic downloads. I mean, Scorpio, you guys are psychic anyway. You know, that's nothing, uh, that's nothing new there. You know, you guys always, you're Scorpio psychic, you know, we know that. Uh, but it's just going to be really turned on at this time. And you're really being called and you're really being led. And there's somebody standing right beside you. You know, this Queen of Rods is standing right beside you. Because, it's funny I mentioned, I just got chills all on my legs. I'm getting a little message because I'm Scorpio rising. But because it's by the Spirit card, it could be somebody in Spirit. And I just mentioned how my mom's a Leo. So to me, and this was always, of course, my card. When this card shows up, I immediately think it's my mom. All we, my whole life, the Queen of Rods is my mom in the readings. So. so for some of you, it's a mom, but maybe not. Some of you, I think more of you, this is going to be somebody in the flesh. You know, this is a real person in, who's incarnate and living in a, a, a body. <laughs> and um, they are heaven sent, oh boy. I might write that, or heaven sent, because they're definitely heaven sent. Whether they're a, a spirit you know, could be, but, or whether, for most of you, I feel like this is somebody that, and what I'm getting about it, they're very action-oriented, they might be an Aries, um, they, but it's somebody who's, uh, is going to be able to put your ideas to use, like, you know, uh, Scorpios, and, well, Scorpios are pretty go-getters, you know, but a lot of the water signs, a lot of times, yeah, they get the downloads, and they get all this stuff, but then they don't, they might lack a little bit of the initiative to really, and these, that's where the fire signs are great. You know, the fire signs come in and they've got, they have that initiative. You know, they, they're, they're go-getters and they're, go they're doers. Um, take a chance on this, whatever it is. You know, again, I'm not saying qu quit your job with nowhere to go. That may happen for some. Or move out with nowhere to live. <laughs> that may happen for some. And then sometimes that's the ironic. I mean, some of you could be going through some splitting up of maybe your main relationship, like that, but your main partner. But it could be maybe a roommate that you're just like, you know, I've had enough of this idiot. I'm not picking up their socks anymore. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm going I'm to go to this new place. I don't care, you know. Uh, but there is some kind of changes in your home environment. You guys, if this is a romantic relationship, because it could be, it could be for some of you, you know, maybe you're going to be like moving in together real quickly. And that wouldn't surprise me either coming back to astrology because that Saturn's coming out of that fourth house. So therefore that is, you know, uh, the home, where you live. That's the, that's the number one interpretation of that fourth house is where you live. Okay, let's go ahead and, I'm sorry if that hurt your ears. I, I always forget not to bang on the, 
Uh, but anyways, um, let's do your animal totem. Real quick announcement, I am open up for the Libra Ingress reading, available for a limited time. It's the, a look ahead, a quarterly look ahead at the upcoming season. Always real popular. I like to start offering it about a month or so in advance to give everybody a chance to get in so I'm not just completely overwhelmed uh, you know, with orders, so spread it out a little bit. Uh, many people order all the time. It's you know these ingress readings are definitely one of the most popular readings. So if you're interested in that, you can find that information uh, on my website. Let's go ahead and shuffle and get our animal totem for Scorpio, the beaver. You're building something. Beavers are builders. So you're building. You might be building a new home. Some of you, when these two cards come up, you might be building a new home. But let's read what I wrote initially. Builder, dreamer, familiar friend, dweller of land and water, a foot in two worlds. Your diligence can change the flow of the river, be the architect of your life. Yeah, well, the word architect really popped off the page, at, I mean, off the card at me. So some of you might be building a house. You might be talking to an You might be working really closely. Maybe that's the seventh house partnership. You're working really close with an architect to build or modify your house. The other thing that gets me about this card and you, Scorpios, is, it, um, you know, a dweller of land and water. Because I say this a lot, but I really feel that way. Of all the water signs, you guys are very grounded. You're very down to earth. Scorpios always are very down to earth. And um, you also, the scorpion is a land creature. It's not a water creature. It's a land creature. So, you know, you're very down to earth and, um, you know, you're very grounded. I just had this image flash in my head. It really made me sad. It was like a joke meme. It was uh, this somebody's cooking a, a crab um, in a pot of soup or whatever, and the crab is eating. The, they have corn thrown in there, and the, the crab is eating the the uh, corn in the cob as it's being boiled to death. And people thought that was funny. It, it just really irked me and really made me sad. I don't know why I'm telling you this, but it just popped into my head right now. Hey, before we go, everybody, uh, it's back to school time. So if you have people in school or you yourself are going back to school, maybe consider picking up one of my notebooks. I have just a few options, a few of the many options here. Now, it's not under my regular Vicki Verley on Amazon because that's just written out books. These are empty. They're sketchbooks, but then there's also journals with lined, uh, the journals are the ones with the line and the sketchbook. But I just have so many, like literally hundreds of um, different ones. I have these music books, so I put it under a different uh, brand, which is VV Creative, which has always been my graphic design uh, brand, VV Creative. Um, so, you know, if you're considering, you know, these are $5.99 on Amazon, you know, you get free shipping if you're on Prime and everything. If you're going back to school and you're picking up notebooks anyway, why not get yourself some really cool ones? Uh, and that would also really help me out. And I'm, with the Uranus North Node and all this Space Age stuff, I felt like I wanted to really show this on video. I put it on my website a while back, but I haven't really really fully came out and talked about this. Uh, this is a book that I wrote uh, 10 years ago. I self-published, and I wrote it under a pen name, uh, VM Lariv, which is an anagram of Verley, my last name. And it's called Star Seed, A Pleiadian Tale of Love. It is a paranormal romance. It was written in 2012, 10 years ago now. Uh, it is a uh, paranormal romance sci-fi novel novella. It's short. It's 169 pages. Uh, I, that's right, I forgot I put that chart of Rory Lang in there. Uh, I have to take that out. There's a lot of things that have to be uh, the imaginary character Rory Lang. <laughs> I found a chart of hers. Uh, but anyways, I, I made up a chart. I found a time that could fit to whatever. Uh, anyways, but yeah, if you enjoy sci-fi, you might like it, or paranormal romances. It, it's a little rough, you know, it needs some, it needs some polishing for sure. Um, or if you are in, I always saw it as being, you know, like a TV show or movie or something like that. I, know, I see the scenes in my head and everything. I really never saw it as a book, but at the time, that's all I had to work with, so I self-published it as a book. Uh, but it's a good story, I think. It's a very good story, and um, it could go on. You know, I had never did a follow-up uh, book to it, or but if it were any, you know, even if it were you know a TV series, it could go on. I have a notebook filled with a possible future storylines that involve time travel and walk-ins and you know all kinds of cool stuff. So if anybody out there 
you know, is in, does that kind of thing, or is looking for a story to possibly, you know, or collaboration even, you know, definitely get a hold of me because um, I, f I came across this and I feel like uh, it's an idea whose time has come potentially. So, yeah, check it out if you're interested or if you just like paranormal stuff and sci-fi and you want to just read it, that would help. Great. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Next up is the uh, Patreon peep. If you're a member of that, you can get in on four more bonus cards we're going to do. Uh, remember, you are love and beauty incarnate. Thank you all for all your support. Please do hit that subscribe button. Your likes, shares, and comments are also appreciated. Have a great month. We're in some turbulent times, but we can definitely ride the wave through it into higher dimensional realities that are going to be you know, really beautiful, and you guys are really, uh, you know, spirit is really aligning with you and pulling you and really helping you a lot. Have a great one. We'll see you again next month. Patreon's up next.